This video shows you how to add data or create special data using just a file that has latitude and longitude stored within it, which is something that you'll probably get come across quite a lot in your work. You add data how you would add any data. So in this instance, my coordinates are stored in a format that is a point DBF, which is database format um, of ArcMap, it's like a table. You add it and there it has been added to my interface. If you right click that and you say open, you will see the information that is actually stored within it. So here I've got various fields. I've got an object ID, which is a default created by our map because each entry into a table will have a unique ID. So that's always automatically created. There's a key sequence, lat and long, so latitude and longitude, and also the angle. What you're interested in in this particular um, file are the latitude and the longitude. And what you want is to have these show on the map. To do that, you can, by the way, also dock these tables. If they haven't been docked, you can remove them as well. I normally dock one at the bottom and I can actually collapse them as well. But to create the XY coordinates, you right click, you say display XY data. That's the easiest way. And the software will try to do this for you or identify the fields that are actually the most suited to be used for the algorithm that is behind the tool. So the X field is basically your X points. If you have a Cartesian coordinate system, X and Y, um, and the Y field is your latitude field. Then you also have a Z field that's three dimensions, so that will be depth. So these are horizontal, X and Y, and then you've got a depth field as well, Z field. If you've got height values above a certain reference point, anything like that, so depth values, you can put them in here. In this in particular instance, there aren't any. And then it also gives you the coordinate system that you would wish to use. Going back to how what the table looked like earlier, we saw that we had latitude and longitude, which means that I must use a geographic coordinate system or a datum. It cannot be a projected coordinate system because it's not in meters. You can change this as well. It's automatically picked up WGS84. That is because the data frame, this one here, the layers in the data frame are using WGS84. Um, some of them are projected, for example, the roads layer is actually projected into a planar coordinate system. But they use the WGS84 datum for all of them. So the system automatically picks up that that is the, the datum and assumes that that can be applied to this particular file. It can be. The data are from South Africa, so you have a good chance that it is either the WGS84 or the Hartie Beersp hook 1994. In this instance, it is WGS84, so you can use that. However, for example, if it would be the Hartie Beersp hook one, you would just um, change it. So it's an edit. You'd look for the particular local datum that is the Hartie Beersp hook 1994. You'd select it and say OK, and it would change here. However, that's not what we want. We actually want the WGS8 1984. By the way, these are favorites. I have created these as my favorites that I use a lot. Therefore, they appear here. You might not have any favorites. What you would do then is search for the datum that is most suited to your data. It's a geographic coordinate system because it's in that and long. It's stored in a the world. There it is. You can make it a favorite. Right. It's not, I have it already as a favorite, so I can't add it now, but you can add it to your favorites and you select that one and say, okay. And then you say, okay, it's run and my coordinates are plotted in the map. These are only temporary layers. They are not permanent. You'd have to create a permanent layer. See the events layer, you right click on it. You say data, export data. You navigate to a folder. If you set up a connection folder, then it should automatically navigate to that folder. You're going to call them. These are water. Uh, these are boreholes. So we're going to call them boreholes. They're in WGS84. Always give you names, as your files names that um, are descriptive and intuitive. Say save. Okay. It will run. It will ask you, do you want to add your data to your map? 
in this instance say yes because the events layer here is only temporary so you say yes you have now created a permanent layer this is not the actual permanent layer it simply points to the permanent layer on your hard drive you can now remove the coordinate events right click and say remove you can also remove the table right click and remove and there we have it boreholes roads and the geology and then of course the land use.